Good morning, everyone. So I am Lori Smolensky. I'm from the Institute for Economics and Peace, and we are an independent, nonpartisan, nonprofit think tank that develops new conceptual frameworks to define and to quantitatively measure peace. And we're particularly interested in the relationship between peace and economic prosperity, as well as better understanding the drivers of peace. So these are our core research reports. Today I'm gonna to talk about the cost of violence to the global economy, as well as the transformational effects of something called positive peace. And I'll explain how investments in positive peace yield enhanced economic returns through very concrete and virtuous cycles of peace and economic prosperity, which I hope will underscore the potential for divestments in nuclear weapons and in violence more generally. Now, much of this will come as no surprise to you on this webinar, but I hope to provide some numbers that underpin the cases that you are making through the campaign. So this graphic shows the total number of nuclear weapons by country for both the world as a whole and then for the nuclear armed states, excluding the US and Russia. And you'll see that in 2017, the US and Russia had combined held about 92% of all ocular nuclear weapons. Now the Institute for Economics and Peace doesn't focus exclusively on nuclear weapons, and thus I'm gonna talk about the cost and the impact of violence more broadly. Now this map shows the 2019 Global Peace Index, or GPI. This is our core report. And it ranks 163, or a core index, I should say, it ranks 163 countries and territories according to their relative states of negative peace. Negative peace is the absence of violence. And this is an abstract definition that I'll come back to throughout. But it measures things like nuclear weapons possession, homicide, crime, and so forth. And I'll note that the largest number of countries to deteriorate, or I should say the largest, the largest number of countries to deteriorate on any indicator in the last Global Peace Index was for our nuclear weapons and heavy weapons indicator, with 76 countries out of 163 deteriorating. Now, each year as part of the Global Peace Index research, we calculate the global economic impact of violence to the economy, which we define as the expenditure and economic effects related to containing, preventing, and dealing with the cost of violence or the consequences of violence. Now that, those estimates include direct costs, indirect costs, and something called the multiplier effect. And as you can see here, those calculations include 18 different variables across three groups. In 2018, we saw that the global economic impact of violence was about $14 trillion, which is just over 11% of global GDP. And that's about $1,853 US dollars per person. Like all of you on this webinar, I like to imagine where that money could be redirected so to put this in perspective, just a 1% reduction in the cost of violence is equivalent to all official development assistance, so foreign aid in 2017. A 10% reduction in the cost of violence would be equivalent to the world's third, third largest economy. And these are actually pretty conservative estimates. And then as you can see on the right, Government spending on military and internal security comprises more than 70% of the global economic impact of violence. And security expenditure in this case includes spending on police and judicial systems, as well as the costs associated with incarceration. Now this slide highlights the 10 countries with the highest military expenditure in 2018 as a total per capita and then as a percentage of GDP. Now, thus far, I focused on the cost of violence, negative peace, and I want to shift to a much broader and more ambitious concept, and that is the concept of positive peace. So as you can see here, these two definitions, negative peace on the left and then positive peace. So negative peace is the foundation of that first index I showed you. It, it, it measures the absence of violence. But negative peace tells us very little about what is necessary to build peaceful, sustainable, peaceful societies 
once violence is abated. So positive peace represents the attitudes, the institutions, and the structures that create and sustain peaceful societies. I'm not gonna get too in the weeds with these concepts, but I'm happy to come back to them in the Q&A if, if there's interest. If there's interest. So through correlation analysis, we've de derived our positive peace framework there on the left, which are eight factors that are interrelated and interdependent and they function as a system. And essentially, we found that these eight factors are what are necessary for societies to establish and maintain peace over time. We, we have uh, an index that specifically measures these indicators. So rather than looking at homicide and crime and nuclear weapons, we're looking at factors like gender inequality, gender equality, excuse me, and the safety of journalists. And as you can see there on the right, countries that rank well on positive peace generally have higher levels of gender equality, environmental sustainability, gross domestic product, and so forth. And notably, peacefulness has considerable impact on macroeconomic performance. And that's really what I want to talk about now. So it's quite easy to say that rich countries tend to be more peaceful. But as we see here, real GDP growth is correlated with changes in overall levels of positive peace. And we see that the median growth rate in real GDP for countries in which positive peace improved the growth was about 4.2% as compared to countries that deteriorated in peace, which recorded only about 1.8% growth, and that's per year. Now, for those of you like me who are not an economist, perhaps this is easier to conceptualize. This slide draws from a hypothetical scenario in which over the past 70 years, the least peaceful countries had a growth rate equivalent to the most peaceful countries. And the per capita income of those low peace countries would have been more than three times higher than what it actually was in 2016. And in this scenario, the global economy would have been about 13.87 trillion US dollars larger than its actual level in 2018. This slide just shows that countries that improve in positive peace experience higher rates of appreciation in the value of their currency, as well as improvements in their credit rating scores. And we've done a lot of research around this, so if you're curious, I'll include the link to that report in the chat box. The takeaway that I want to leave you with is really that the macroeconomic impact of investing in peace and in positive peace specifically is very clear, as you all know well, and yet the world continues to allocate enormous resources on containing and preventing, excuse me, containing and creating violence and very little on promoting peace. Whereas you've seen that even a, sub, even a very partial reduction in nuclear weapons and violence spending would yield a substantial increase in GDP, with, which could address many of the needs facing the world today, from renewable energy to improved food security and more equitable social policy. So I hope to have left you with some numbers to um, buttress your, your cases, as I mentioned earlier. And with that, I'm very pleased to turn it back to Alan.